So let's bring on um, uh, Chris Tebbets. Let's uh, say hello to Mr. Tebbets. Uh, hey, Chris. Hey, Amber. How nice seeing you. You too, such as it is. Yeah, so so where are you holed up these days? I'm holed up in my office in uh, Heinsberg, probably about 17 miles from you as the crow flies. Okay. All right. So you have an office? You don't write from home? Oh, my office in my home. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that's, that's good. That's good. So, Chris, you're um, an, an author. T tell us about how that started. When when did you start writing? And um, You know, I moved to Vermont about 25 years ago, and I'd given up my pursuit of the, do, having a career in theater in New York City and wasn't quite sure what to do. And I just slowly ebbed through children's theater and um, a couple of different things I was trying, different kinds of writing, until I finally landed on writing for kids. And something about that clicked for me. And all the things that I didn't want to do uh, in theater and the filmmaking I tried and in writing for adults, something clicked. And I was then willing to do not just the writing, but also what I call the business of the business and trying to get published and finding an agent and doing all, taking all that rejection. All the things, there was something about writing for kids that just really uh, appealed to me strongly enough to put up with the stuff that I didn't want to do elsewhere. Um, and from there, it started taking off. So um, what was your first published work? Um, I have it right here. Uh, I did a series called The Viking. Once upon a time, yeah, uh, back in 2003, like a fantasy adventure series for kids who are uh, eight to 12 years old. I call that middle grade fiction. Um, and in retrospect, again, after all the different things I tried, it's interesting to me anyway, that I'm writing uh, for kids who are the age now that I was when I was the biggest reader of my life. And it's oh, sort of like your own life informs your own choices, even, even if you don't see those coming. Um, middle grade fiction is really where my heart is, but I like to write a lot of different stuff. Yeah, obviously. So um, you you had that was a series. Yeah, a series of four books. Uh, I'd never written novels before. They just threw me in the water and said, "Swim, right." <laughs> and you've been how how long have you been a full time author? Uh, I think about seventeen years now. Wow, that that is terrific. And those are your books there. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a great picture. So after you wrote that uh, series of books, what happened? Um, I was I was still trying to get um, my own stuff. Those books were published under my name, and I don't have it on me, but um, I got a, a call from an editor who said, hey, I have this idea for a gay romance I want you to write with another author. Um, and I thought, oh, you know, okay, I'd never done the, the co-writing thing before, but they threw us in, again, they threw us into the pool together, and this woman, Lisa Papa Dimitrio, and I uh, came up with this sort of Cyrano-inspired gay co uh, romantic comedy written in two voices. I wrote the gay guy, she wrote the straight friend, like sort of, Will and Grace in a, in a public high school kind of story. Um, and, you know, as these things go, you know, you meet one person and then they know somebody else is looking for somebody to write this. And, you know, connections happen if you keep showing up. All right. So uh, how did you get hooked up with James Patterson? Yeah, same principle applies. The people who um, I wrote for for uh, this Viking series, uh, they are what's called a book packager. And so they have a lot of um, authors working for them, writing ideas that they generate for publishers. Um, and when James Patterson decided to stop doing just adult work and start doing children's books, uh, he approached them and said, do you have anybody who might be interested? And I basically did an audition. I wrote some sample chapters based on an idea for a book of his. Um, and then that eventually turned into this middle school series I've been doing uh, with him for several years now. So you say middle school series, uh, does it have a title? Is it a continuation of different stu characters? Yeah, um, middle school is sort of the uh, the umbrella name for the series. And there's a character, Rafe Cachadorian, and um, while there are other characters within this universe, I've been writing the Rafe Cachadorian books. There's about eight of them. And was that the one turned into a movie? It was, yeah. Middle school, the worst years of my life. Okay, let's uh, see a clip. Let's see a clip of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oops. <laughs> I'm James Patterson. Here's a look at the new comedy based on my book, Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life. Listen, have a great first day. I love you so much. Creativity has no place in this school. Taking down the school bully. This principal is evil. I'm gonna make a difference. Think outside the box. Is a family affair. Feel like a drive? She's gonna get me arrested. yippee ki -yay! Oh, man. Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life. Directed by Steve Carr. Rated EG. So they took a book that you wrote or co-wrote oh. and um, turned into a movie. How cool was that? Total. I mean, I'm not a bucket list guy, but if I did, yeah, total bucket list item. Got to go to the premiere in New York. And, um, you know, one of the things my mom always complains about is, and I, what I hear from kids all the time is, 
why is your name so small on the cover? <laughs> they don't know how big a name James Patterson is literally and figuratively. And uh, as it turns out, one of the benefits of getting a movie is equal, uh, you know, equal font size on the screen. <laughs> Plus, I'm sure you don't care what size your name is on the checks either. <laughs> that's, uh... Reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So um, are you still writing with James? I am. I'm just actually, uh, two days ago, I started a brand new project with him. And um, we've also got, uh, I've done my first adult thriller with him as well. And that's my newest book. It just came out last month. Oh, cool. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Sure. Um, so also you wrote with uh, Jeff Probst, I believe. I did. I totally won the lottery there. Um, oh, okay. Tell yeah. us how that happened and what and what happened. To I mean, again, it, it happened because I was out in the world and meeting people and I just happened to meet the right person who Jeff just happened to approach at the publisher and said, you know, I want to do a... Um, Kids were always asking him, like, you know, when are you going to do Survivor for Kids? Uh, which, by the way, it was my favorite. It is my favorite all-time show. It was an incredible piece of luck that I ended up getting to work with him. Um, and when he, when kids say to him, like, when are you going to do Survivor for Kids? You can sort of imagine the legal nightmare that that is. <laughs> and the helicopter moms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll literally be in the helicopter. Um, so he decided to write this series of books, and he knew TV and movies, but he didn't know books, so he wanted a co-author. He approached an old editor of mine, and she approached me, and um, we did two trilogies. It was I, it was a fantastic experience. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what, what were they called, and what were they about? Or uh, the series is called Stranded, and then there's uh, two trilogies, uh, all under that name, Stranded. There it is. Uh, thanks, Russell. I don't need to keep holding this up, do I? <laughs> uh, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. That's right. <laughs> and it's, it's basically it's a, a newly blended family of four kids who find themselves stranded on an island in the middle of the South Pacific. And, um, you know, sort of, again, like it's, it's Jeff's answer to Survivor for Kids. So we oh. borrowed, the fact that I was a big fan actually really helped because we had that common language as we were writing together. So we put as much Survivor into the story as possible. Now, did you get to go to any Survivor activities? No, boy, did I try too. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the road to Samoa and I was like, I'll come if you want. I was like, <laughs> that would be cool uh, to see yeah. the, not, not so much be a, 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 a cast member but to be on the outside watching how they do things oh you know? yeah i used to think i wanted to be on survivor but i would literally i would have been the guy who cried every day so. <laughs> <laughs> i got to write the books instead all right so uh tell us about this uh, new book that you have um yeah total change of pace i've always said like as a writer i admire the chameleons more than the specialists the people who do lots of different stuff so it was really fun to sort of go into this whole new world Oh, Russell has it. I'm not going to pick it up. Um, it's a <laughs> first case, and uh, it's about a young woman who gets kicked out of MIT. Uh, she's got some serious hacking skills that get her into trouble, um, but then she gets snatched up as an intern at the FBI as a series of murders are unrolling, and um, the investigation goes from there. So how, how did you know about hacking and all that? This is another thing I love about this profession. I mean, I went to the, the Boston FBI field office. I saw their cybersecurity unit. Um, I, it makes you learn about stuff you never would have to, but it's fascinating stuff. I love sort of being, for, it was like when I was a kid, I hated to get into the bath, but then I hated to get out of the bath. <laughs> research, once I got going on this whole cybersecurity thing, fascinated me. I didn't want to stop and start writing, but of course I had to eventually. Oh, okay. And we have another clip of, uh, I believe you reading from uh, one of your books. Are you uh, aware? Yeah. My, um, my YA novel that came out last year. Uh, this one is more autobiographical. And um, the, the, I think what we're about to see is the prologue, which is very autobiographical from um, a sort of tawdry episode I had when I was working at Friendly's long, long time ago. And YA stands for? Uh, thank you, Young Adult. Thank you. Teen Novels. Yeah, very good. Let's yeah. watch this that. This new solo project is a young adult novel called Me, Myself, and Him. Can we please welcome storyteller Chris Tebbets? <laughs> So, the last thing I remember before passing out is taking in a lung full of nitrous oxide and closing my eyes. My friend and co-worker at the time, also named Chris, tells me that I set down the whipped cream cartridge, stood up, paused like I wasn't going anywhere, and then fell forward, almost slow motion, like a tree going down, until I landed face first on the cement. All of that's blank in my memory. It had started out as a regular evening. I'd put on my polyester houndstooth check uniform and 
Went to uh, scoop ice cream at Friendly's, just like I've been doing all summer since coming home from college. I don't remember the shift itself, but I can tell you that it ended in one of the usual ways, which is to say, hanging out behind the restaurant, uh, restaurant after closing with Chris and his friend Rob, listening to music from Rob's car, smoking camel lights, and ultimately, usually, huffing whippets out of empty whipped cream cans. <laughs> Friendly's had plenty of those, of course. We kept the empties and cases on the back porch behind the restaurant as well. And with the whipped cream gone, all that was left inside was the nitrous oxide gas that we frequently put to use for the head buzz it gave us. It wasn't unusual to suck down eight or 10 hits at a time, but I was only on my second hit that night when I lost consciousness. I have no idea how long I was out. Oh, wow, that was something. And um, I, I remember whippets. <laughs> right. I, I remember them quite well, quite well and all. So um, where is that book going? Uh, when did that came come out? came out almost exactly a year ago, July 2019. I'd love to say, you know, it's getting made into a movie or it's, you know, some it's broken through in some giant way. But um, uh, I guess I'll rephrase and say everybody go out and buy that one. Well, uh, we've got a friend who's uh, watching tonight from, she's a librarian down in uh, in the Key West, and she says they have lots of your books oh, right. there in, the, in the Key West uh, library. Thank so you. if you're ever down that way, stop in and see our friend Jessica. I will. <laughs> I'm sure she'd love to have you there uh, reading for, for some of the books. That'd be great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chris. We'll be back with the quiz later on, and uh, it's nice seeing you. You too. Bye-bye. All right.